इन दिस सेशन सम एडवांस प्रॉब्लम ऑन अल्किन वाट वॉल्यूम ऑफ मिथेन एट एस टी पी इज फॉर्म फ्रॉम सिक्सटीन पॉइंट फोर ग्राम ऑफ सोडियम एसिटेट बाई फ्यूजन विद सोडा लाइन सो लेट एस सी दिस आंसर सो आंसर इज सो दिस इज द सोडियम एसिटेट एंड इज रिएक्टिंग विद द सोडा लाइन एन ए ओ एच ए सी ओ कैल्सियम ऑक्साइड द कम्बिनेशन ऑफ सोडा लाइन सो ऑन कम्बिनेशन ऑफ दिस वन so we know very well so this will give you uh, this is a decarboxylation reaction this will convert into sodium carbonate and methane gas so uh, 82 g of sodium acetate will give you 22.4 liter of methane gas now it is asking 60.4 g so if you take 60.4 g of sodium acetate so by using unity method we will get here 4.4 liter of methane gas so this is the volume of methane gas at ntp If a rocket was fueled with kerosene and liquid oxygen, what mass of oxygen would be required for every liter of kerosene? Assume kerosene to have the average composition C14H30 and the density, the density of kerosene is 0.764 gram per ml. So let us see how we can solve this question. So uh, this is the kerosene. So on burning pages of oxygen, we know every when, uh, every that. Uh, it will give you carbon dioxide and water so now you balance this equation so balancing also not difficult easy so here the molar mass of this kerosene is 198 g and the molar mass of this oxygen is 688 g that is 32 multiplied by 43 upon 2 now we need to find out the volume of kerosene so mass by density will get the volume now here we'll see that a uh, volume of kerosene is this much so we need to find out mass of the oxygen so mass of the oxygen is how much so 259.16 ml will give you 688 g of oxygen so here they are asking per liter per liter means is very clear every liter so if for 1 liter just uh, 688 divided by the volume of the kerosene multiplied by 1000 so we will get this much gram of oxygen write the structure of all the alkenes so this is the alkenes topic alkenes we can write here this is the actually alkenes that can be hydrogenated to form 2 methyl pentene so let us see it is very easy so this is the 2 methyl pentene two this is a two locant in this locant one methyl group is attached so this is the five carbon so if you do hydrogenation so what will happen so this is a two methyl so on hydrogenation which type of structure we require so it can be this structure alkene can be this one this alkene alkene can be this one alkene can be this one and so there will be four different type of structure of alkene can be possible the study of chlorination of propane four product a b c and d whose formula is c3h6 were isolated each was further chlorinated to provide trichloro product so it was found that a provided one trichloro product b gave two c and d each gave three so identify a b c and d so it is clear this is the uh, compound so on one chlorination we are getting this trichloro product so let us see how we can solve it so this is the trichloro isomers so we will see so suppose this is the product a provide trichloro product so on one chlorination if you take this structure so we will get one product suppose if you take this structure so we will get here two product suppose if you take this structure so we will get three product one cl this side one cl this side and one cl this side so there are three cl are present and suppose if you take this structure so in this center there are two chlorine opposite two chlorine one vicinal one at the one position jam uh, jam chlorine so we will get again here one cl this side one cl this side one cl this side so there is three structure so it is also a three isomers each other so this is the answer of this questions and butane is produced by monobromination of ethane followed by the urge reaction calculate the volume of ethane at ntp 
required to produce 55 gram of N butane. If the bromination takes place with 90% yield and the Urs reaction is 85% yield. So it is very clear. So this butane is pro uh, produced by monobromination of ethane. And again uh, in monobromination of ethane, so here we have uh, that is take place during the Urs reaction and actually it is 85% yield. 85% yield means uh, original compound is giving the end butane which is 85%. So we will solve this problem. So this is the ethane gas on bromination we will get uh, ethyl bromide plus HBr. Similarly we will get here ethyl bromide with sodium in presence of dry ether. So this is the Urs reaction we will get here C4H10 and NaBr and which is nothing but the 58 gram which molar mass is this one. Now let us see the problem. If you take 58 gram of butane, we require 2 into 109 ethyl bromide. So 55 gram, we require how much? So 55 gram, we require this much amount of ethyl bromide. But ethyl bromide is actually 85% actual yield is there. So 85% of this compound will be how much? So this is actually uh, in 55 we are getting this much gram. So but this is actually 85%. So 85% of this much is will be 100 upon 85 multiplied by 2 into 109 divided by 58 into 55 243.2 gram. So this is actually now we will getting a 85% actual yield. Now from this again this is produced from the ethane. So 109 gram of C2H5Br is produced from 30 gram of ethane. So this much gram is produced from how much gram of methane? So how much gram of ethane? So this is the amount of ethane. But our actual yield is 90%. So actual ethane required is how much? This yield is only 90%. So actual ethane will be required will be how much? 100 by 90 multiplied by this much. So we will get the actual yield of ethane. Now volume of ethanate NTP will be how much? So this is the mass of the ethane actual yield and divide by the molar mass of the ethane. So molar mass of ethane already we discussed this is the C2H6 30 gram. So again if you divide it this by this and multiply it by the uh, molar volume of the ethane so you will get the 55.5 liter of ethane. So this is the volume of ethane which we are getting in the final reaction. The alkane C5 is pentane and C8 octane on treatment with chlorine gives only one monochloride give the structure of each alkane and its chloride so only one equivalent of Cl is required so let us see these reactions so we can see here so a question this is the pentane we can see here so on monochloration only one monochloride. So, if we take a structure like this for this C5H12, so we will get only one monochloride. So, it chlorine can be attached anywhere, here, 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 here. So, you will get only one product. Similarly, we have to think uh, octane in such a way so that again we will get only one chloro, uh, monochloride. So, again, if you take one equivalent, so if you take the structure this one in this way, so there is only one possibility of monochloride. So answer will be this and this. So this is nothing but a 2,2 dimethyl propane and this will be your 2,2,4,4 tetramethyl butane. So this is our answer in which if you do chlorine answer you will get only one type of monochloride. Calculate the delta H for the two propagation steps in the reaction of methane with Cl2. The bond energy for CH3H, CH3Cl, HCl and CLCl uh, CL are respectively 105, 85, 103 and 58 kilocalorie per mole. So how we can calculate? So we have to take the two propagation steps. So we know very well methane when react with the Cl2. So there is a breakage of this bond and formation of HCl in step 1. So let us see what is the steps. So two propagation steps are the so step one breaking of CH3H bond that is 105 and formation of SCL. So formation of SCL will be 
so this is the breaking of bond so formation will be negative so total bond energy will be plus 2 kilo calorie per mole now step 2 breaking of cl2 so cl2 is breaking so we will get 58 and second is the formation of ch3 cl so that will be your minus 5 so this is the breaking of bond so total energy will be minus 27 kilo calorie per mole so step 2 is this much energy step 1 is this much energy how many mono carboxylic acids are possible which on decarboxylation gives neo pentene so let us see how we can solve this problem so we have only one mono carboxyl possible so which is in the form of this compound so if you do decarboxylation of this compound so this will convert into co2 and we will get neo pentene so we have to make a structure like this only indicate the reactivity of vinylic allylic and aliphatic hydrogen in the cyclohexene so this is the cyclohexene compound we have to find the reactivity so in reactivity wise first will be your aliphatic let us see this one so this is the reactivity sequence so we have to identify which is vinylic which is allylic which is aliphatic so these are the allylic hydrogen this is a double bond so a carbon from the adjacent to double bond is the allylic so there will be two allylic position these carbons which is attached with the uh, double bond is your vinylic and these are the aliphatic carbon so reactivity sequence allylic will be more reactive this is more stable compound followed by is aliphatic and least stable is vinylic so there they will give you more energy they will give you less energy less energy. so bond energy of this will be less this will be more reactive bond energy is high again more reactive and 108 bond energy this will be your again more so this will be your less reactive so this is the reactivity sequence uh, reactivity sequence of this compound so this is more reactive followed by this one or this one and then this one so this will not react at all